Hello, and thanks for clicking on this video. In a moment here, we're going to do a repair on the motherboard of this stove, which is right behind the digital display. And I have reason to believe that there's a component bad, which is a bake relay. I'll get into that, how I determine that later. But currently, the stove is having erratic start heat, erratic temperature control, and delayed start after the uh, bake cycle is started for cooking inside the stove. So if you're interested in possibly repairing that, uh, I'm going to explain how I determine that and how to repair it. Stay tuned. Okay, so we've moved the stove away from the wall. We've re unplugged the plug for safety. And we're going to be removing this top panel here in the back. And I see the schematic and documents are still in a package there. We'll pull those out. And we're going to remove the back access panel by taking out some uh, hex head sheet metal screws mainly. And then uh, we'll be on to the next point. So that's what we're going to do. Okay, so we have removed the back upper panel by removing about six or seven sheet metal screws. And that allows access to the board, which is right here. What I'm going to do now is take a picture or two of the board and also write down the colors of the wires and where they go just for safekeeping just in case something happens and I don't remember but that's what I'm going to do now and then I'm going to take those four Phillips screws out as you can see and we're going to remove the board from the, the stove once we've done that okay as you can see there's the wires that have been pulled out and the modular plug right there and um, I took the four Phillips screws out and it, I found it easier to take the modular plug out after I removed the board because there were some retainers that you had to bend a little bit to allow the modular plug to come out. So I took the four screws out, then I removed the modular plug last. And right here, this is what we have. Now we have the board, and we have my little drawing there. Give me a peace of mind. And what we're going to do is we're going to be looking at this relay right here, I believe it is. Yeah, this is the relay, I think. That's the bake relay. And we're going to be replacing that shortly, so stay tuned. Okay, so a little background on this project. Uh, some weeks ago, uh, the cooks and the family notified me that the oven was not coming up to temperature quickly, very delayed, erratic temperature, uh, frustrating for cooks. So I pulled this unit out earlier, and I'm going to show you right here. This is the the bake relay right here okay and what I did was I removed it and the board and I took a file and I filed along three of the corners to weaken the plastic cover and I folded it over and I cleaned the contacts with the modified emery board and it was working fine for a long time and I, I knew its days were numbered but um, recently I was informed it was delayed start again, took a t an hour to get up to heat, so it was time to change the relay. So what I did was I got the numbers off the relay, off the side of the relay, which you can see right there, if it focuses, and I purchased two relays from, uh, you can go online and just search that. This happened to come from DigiKey, and the relay price was three dollars sixty nine cents I believe something like that very very small cheap so I bought two because of the shipping on them and uh, I suspect it's since I couldn't inspect the contacts after I sanded them with the emery board I realized possibly I couldn't have gotten them and cleaned them well enough because of the cramped quarters they were in so it's time to change the relay so you'll notice I have a schematic here and it's showing the bake at the uh, on there and then also here is the bake relay on another document I have right here and so that's the relay suspect relay I thought of uh, switching the bra the broiling relay with the bake relay and not spending any money but then I thought yeah if we keep the stove for three or four more years I'll be changing it again so it's just time to let it go so uh, stay tuned and I'm gonna remove the board out here and I'll show you how I'm gonna do that okay so I have flipped out the first half of the board. This is a bonded board with these terminals on the bottom. It's like a hinge. You gotta be careful with it. And I had to push um, some the plastic housing away from the board 
because there are these very small snap-in, like this right here, uh, snap-in latches, you might say, and they're all around it. So you have to be careful. You have to carefully bend. I did use no tools for this. Just bent out the plastic just far enough, and the board would slip out, and I went all around the perimeter of the board, and I loosened them up so I could just kind of unfold this, you might say. There's these wires that are on the bottom, and I've got to be careful with that. And I'm going to attempt to remove the relay while it's in the in this position with the board because I don't I don't want to damage that board and I think I can do it by just keeping it stationary here and this is going to be the bake relay I believe is this one I'm going to double check that and then we're going to replace it so stay tuned and I'll have that started okay so what I've decided to do here is um, this is the relay I'm removing and there are this is the new relay that's going to be going in there's eight terminals, two are for the coil, and these are switching contacts. And the strategy I determined to do is take a, I have a pick here that has a pointed end on it. And I'm, I started out on this end where the far end is with these two terminals. And I was, I put a little spring print tension on this to kind of want it to separate from the board, but avoiding cracking anything. And I applied heat back and forth with this dual heat soldering on in a high heat, back and forth, and slowly the relay is wedging out slightly. So what I'm going to continue to do, as you might see here right now, what I'm going to continue to do is work, once these two are out, I'm going to keep applying heat here, back and forth, and then it's going to squeak out a little bit more, and I'm going to go to these terminals and then these terminals, and then eventually the board will, will, remo will be removed from the, from the um, board, and then I'll be ready to clean out the holes with a small drill bit and insert the new relay into place. So uh, stay tuned for the results of that. Okay, so this is the pick I was using. It's just a, a sharp pick, very gradual taper on it. And I placed it in between and I heated gradually moving the pick along as they were loosening up. I first also, I took a pair of side cutters and basically cut whatever was sticking out past the board that I was soldering on, on the old one, um, to reduce the amount of material I needed to heat and also uh, reduce the length it has to come out to be freed. So I clipped those first just to make it a little easier and I worked my heat around and sure enough the relay has come out. And uh, as you can see my handiwork from before, I'm not sure how this is focusing, but I had filed these corners off and peeled this over and then it snapped it off and I cleaned them. But this one is is going to go and this one is going to go in. So what I'm going to do now is take a small drill bit by diameter of this and I'm just going to work it through the holes the eight holes that are on there, insert it, and I'll, I'll be soldering it. Just stay tuned. Okay, so what I did was is I took my micrometer, I mic'd up the, uh, the pin diameter, and then I came up with this drill bit, put it in this little vice grips, and I just opened the holes up to make sure the solder was clear. One of them I had to reheat, because it had filled back up, I didn't notice. So I reheated it, and then I, as, as it was hot, I push this through the other side and then I cleaned it out. So here's the old relay and now here is the new relay and let's see if we can insert it in there. Beautiful. Okay, it's in there just as the original one was. So now all I have to do is flip it on its back and I'm going to solder those up and then we'll reinstall it, so stay tuned. Okay, so I've soldered the eight points and I'll be reinstalling it, I'll be folding it back together, reinstalling it, and then we will do the test. So stay tuned for the final test in installation and final test. Okay, so uh, what we've got here now is we've put the board in and uh, powered it up and we're going to test right now. That's a good sound. That click is the relay kicking in. And let's open this up here. And I feel heat on the element. so. 
this was a success today. So, anyways, if you want to save a few bucks on a repair, those boards cost 100 to 200 bucks installed, maybe more. Uh, simple relay here, four dollars, three dollars and sixty-nine cents, I believe. Plus postage, it was five or six dollars. Uh, save a few bucks. Thanks for watching this video, and have a great day.